or a wise heart. You know what? The heart, the heart is like a blank page. Yeah. The heart is like a blank page. And it depends what we do with our lives. But you know what? Everything gets written on that blank page. We, we, we live our lives. Every day we get a, a slate to clean, a clean slate. This morning you can wake up and the Bible says his mercy is new every morning. And every morning we wake up with a new slate and we're going to fill that slate. And we're going to do a bunch of stuff. We're going to think a bunch of stuff. We're going to say a bunch of stuff that we're going to regret in that day. Probably, if you're human, you will, anyways, or you're not sure about it. But we get a blank page every day, and then at the end of the day, we lay our heads down, and that, that day is done, and it's gone. We go to sleep, we wake up the next day, and there, we get another page. And after the end of the day, it's gone. But you know what? You know what? All of that stuff gets added up. And our life becomes like a book. There it is. Our life is a book. Not with hundreds of pages, but with thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pages written in that book. God knows everyone, but you know what? Our heart knows everyone, too. We only use, it was, I won't go there. Anyways, but, so, the heart, the heart is like a blank page or a book, and we get to write the stories of our heart and what is in our heart. May I ask? We need to ask ourselves the question, what is in our hearts? We can have divided hearts. We can have a heart that is wicked. We can have a heart that is right. Or we can have a heart that is pure. And we can have a heart that's stubborn and wicked, deceitful, vile. There's a multitude of things that your heart can be. Did you know that God has a heart? He doesn't have a, a pumping boom, 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 boom. Because he's a spirit. But God has a heart. The Bible says that God has a heart. And then he said in, in Genesis that, let us make man in our image. So in the image of God created he man. So God has a heart. So what do we have? We also have a heart. Of course we do. Because we have been created in his image. 1 Samuel 13, 14 says, The Lord saw him a man after his own heart. God saw a man that was after the heart of God. Who was that man? You know who he is. What's his name? David. David was a man after God's heart. Acts 13, 24, and he said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart which shall fulfill all of my will. And then in Genesis 8.21 it says, And the Lord said in his heart. So God has a heart. God has a heart. What are some of the characteristics of God's heart? Shout them out. Come on. This is a lot easier than the, the scripture one. You don't have to quote a scripture. Love. Absolutely. What are some more characteristics of God's heart? Compassion, a good one. Kind. What? Kind. Kindness, absolutely. Forgiveness. forgiveness, yes. Righteousness, yes. Come on, Lisa. Let's hear one. <laughs> Patience. Long suffering. Patience. Long suffering. Long suffering, absolutely. Justice. That's justice. God has an amazing amount of. And that's what we're supposed to go after. We're supposed to go after his heart. Philippians 4, 7 says, And let the peace, peace, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. How about Galatians 5.22? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. You know there's one I haven't mentioned yet? But the heart of God, the heart of God is a heart of wisdom. Okay, it might, it might sound, Pearl. What do we do now? I just keep preaching? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the heart of God is a heart of wisdom. The heart of God is a healthy heart. I had a sick heart. I don't think it's that great it's still, but <laughs> I had a sick heart. But God has a healthy heart. God is perfect in all his ways. Mm -hmm. And we should follow. The heart of God is a healthy heart, and one we should follow every day of our lives. Romans 11, 23 says, Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. And Jude 25 says, To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. The heart of God is the only heart that we should follow. It can be scary following our own heart because our hearts can take us this way, can take us that way. Don't follow your own heart. You can sometimes, if it's in alignment with God's heart, don't follow your heart if it's not in alignment with God's heart because it will lead you to evil. It will lead you to evil. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick thing on the board here. is a wise heart. It says, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Apply our hearts to wisdom. That's the heart of God. A wise person's heart leads the right way, but a fool's heart leads the wrong way. Solomon, this is uh, Solomon, he has a dream, and God answers him in the dream. And God says to Solomon, Behold, I have done according to your words. I have given you a wise and understanding heart. Solomon in, in the Bible, it says that he was the wisest person in the world. But you know what? He wasn't at times either. He was not a good person. We have to be careful because he followed God's heart of wisdom much of the time, but much of the time he didn't. He did the things that his own heart told him to do. And sometimes he did things that his heart told him were actually evil. We need to be careful. We, the heart of God is a wise heart. Then we have another one. We have the heart of man. And it's... The heart of man. It's a foolish heart. Have you ever done anything foolish? Lift your hands if you have done... Okay, the rest of you aren't telling the truth. Because we've all done foolish things. And we can lift up both hands on that. Because even in our old age, we do stupid and foolish things. True or false? It's true. We live, the heart of man is, in essence, it's foolish. And then there's one more heart. That is on the very opposite side. We have the heart of God. We have the heart of man. And then we have we 
we have the heart of evil. That's a scary place to go, but you know what? Our world is in a very large sense being controlled and run by a heart of evil. Who, which, which, in, in which category would you put the, the majority of people in this earth? In which category? Would you say they're following a wise heart, the heart of God? Would you say that the majority of the world is following a foolish heart, the heart of men? Or would you say that they're a wicked and a vile heart, the heart of evil? Just throw up. What do you think? Foolish heart. Foolish heart. I would agree. I would agree. A foolish heart. There are people. And hopefully we're in that class of people which, yes, we can be foolish at times, but we need to go to this direction. But many foolish people end up going to this, a wicked and an evil heart. Let's, I'm just going to read a few scriptures on the heart of man. The fool has said in his heart, what? There is no God. He's a foolish man who doesn't believe in God, who doesn't say, has said in his heart, there is no God. There is a God. And we will all stand before him. There is a foolish, okay, and, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing they, themselves to be wise, they became, they became fools. Again, a foolish heart tends, in general, to go that way, towards an evil heart. What happened? The only way I can explain what an evil heart is, I'm sure you all know what happened on, on October 7th, I believe it was. That was evil. That was pure, un, that was, it, it was evil. It came from a vile and a wicked heart, what happened. Now we can discuss that and everybody has opinion, but that's not what I'm talking about. What happened on that day came from a heart of evil. It was vile and it was wicked. Period. Period. There's, there's no other way to look at it to describe that event. You can talk about many other events related to that, but that's what an evil heart is. Okay. So a foolish and it, like I say, it usually goes that way. But you know what? We're, we've all been fools. Because we're born sinners. And at some point in our life, we have to say, there is a God. Woohoo! There is a God. And God, forgive me of my sins. And that puts us, at least, it puts us on the path of going that way. So easy to go this way. You know what you have to do to go this way? Nothing. Just don't do a thing. Just keep walking. Just keep doing whatever you're doing, thinking however you're thinking. Just do nothing. You'll end up over here. You will. You will. We will. I will. A fool has no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Well, isn't that something that's going on in our world right now? Discover yourself, the me movement that everything that's going on, the unreality that's saying we're real, we're, this is the reality, the new morality, the new this. It's not new, it's old. That's what it is. That's what it is, period. And then we come to the heart of man is a foolish heart and the heart of evil is Ecclesiastes 9.3 says, The heart of the sons of man is full of evil and, here's the word, madness <clears throat> is in their hearts. Wow. Put that on the news because that's exactly what's happening in our world. Is madness in their hearts while they live? Genesis 8.21 says, For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, 
And God saw the wickedness of man and was great in the earth, and that every imagine of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Just do nothing. Do nothing. Do nothing. This is where you will end up. That's where you'll go. You don't have to go that way. You get a fresh piece of paper every day. You can make decisions every day that will change the course of our lives, my life, your life. We can sit on the internet and watch pornography if you want. You know where that's going to take you? Right there. It's not going to take you that way. It won't do it. It will take you this way. You can be mean and obnoxious. You can, and it's going to take you that way. It's going to take you towards the heart of evil. Okay. But there's good news coming. It's it's not all bad news. Actually, it's wonderful news because we have a wonderful Savior who can save to the uttermost. He can save to a willing heart. He won't save to the unwilling heart. He will not save to the unwilling heart, but he will save to the willing heart. Okay, just one more thing, then I'm going to tell you a short story to end this. But uh, just uh, today. You know what? We don't have to have an evil heart. We don't have to have a foolish heart, although sometimes we're just foolish people. We can just do, make bad decisions, make foolish choices, but we don't have to be evil people. We can be healthy, wise, God's wisdom people. Heart. my physical heart but he heals the spiritual hearts Isaiah 61 says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted we don't have to go down the road of evil we don't have to live in the world of foolishness we have to let God heal our hearts. We all have broken hearts. All of our hearts have been or are broken as we sit here and speak, perhaps. But we we all got a bad heart. I got mine fixed. That we need every man, woman needs their heart fixed somewhere in their life, where they come to Jesus and say, "I need your wisdom, God." I don't want to go that road. The things I'm thinking and saying and doing are taking me down that road. We have to stop and say, take me the other way. Eternity. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, And he has made everything beautiful in his time. And he has set eternity in your heart. 
Did you know that all people will live forever, whether they're good or bad, whether they're evil, foolish, or they follow the wisdom of God? That every single person will live in eternity? Where are we going to go? Huh? Very important thing to think about. Very important thing to think about. He has made everything beautiful in his, his time, and he has set eternity. Eternity is coming. For all, most of us here, it's closer than you think. We don't have much time left. I don't have much time left. All of us don't. And the life the, 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 the span, the, the span of a man's life is very short in general anyways. So eternity. Okay. Okay, all of your heart. Mark 12, 30 says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. You know what? God wants it all. He doesn't want part of you. He doesn't want part of you. We can't, come to, we can't come to him and say, God, I want to go to heaven and I'll give you a piece of me. It doesn't work that way. He wants all of our hearts, all the time, every day, every moment. And that's the goal. I'm not saying we, I'm not saying we arrive there, but that is our focus on life, that we give him everything. It's, it's not easy to do. He wants all of our hearts, all of our souls, all of our mind. He wants even all of our strength. He wants it all. He's the all-inclusive God. He wants it all. It's all or nothing. That's just the way it is. We sang this song. Renew, restore, Psalm 51, 10 and 12. It says, this is David, when he was doing foolish things. David was a fool from time to time, just like all of us. We do foolish, stupid, stupid, and some stupid is worse than other stupid. His was stupid, stupid. When, when, he, when he took Bathsheba, but here he says, God, please forgive me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a right spirit. Wow. We get, even in our foolishness, with a right heart, with a willingness, to ask for forgiveness, to change our ways, he will restore us. He'll renew us. He'll keep us on the path going that way. You want to go that way. You don't want to go that way. Keep doing nothing and you'll go that way. Keep doing nothing. Don't, don't seek God. Don't pray. Don't ask. Don't, just keep doing nothing and you'll arrive on the other end. Teach me your way. Psalm 86, 11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all of my heart. All of it. All of my heart. So that's just a little thing. Now, if we follow those tenets, and there's there's more. I just made this, so it just gives you an idea that we need to walk. We need to just not be foolish sometimes. 
We need to lean not, the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Our mind gets in the way, gets in the way of our heart many times. That's the way, that's the way we should go and walk therein. Okay. I'm going to leave you with two scriptures, tell you a quick story, and that's it. Romans 10.10 says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the heart man believes. Not with the head man believes. No, no, no. With the heart. The heart is the eternal thing. When, when, when Jesus returns... He's just going to call the hearts back to him. They're his heart. All the ones that have sought him have walked his way. It's all about the heart. Christianity is all about the heart. The, in, the, the, the innermost being. He knows the thoughts and the intents. He knows when you're lying to him. He knows when you're being untruthful with him. He sees our hearts. You can't... The Old Testament... Jews, they thought they, he couldn't see. That's why it was they had a hard time. Because he's always looking at the heart. He always, I'm going to say it one more, he always, always looks at the heart. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in my heart. You can't hide it. Everybody thinks that you can hide it. You can't hide it. He knows you better than you know yourself. So with the heart, Man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And Ephesians 1.18 says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches. This is what he wants for us. He has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. He wants to enlighten your hearts. And he wants us to walk after that enlightened heart. Okay, my story. Story time here. I have something. Rick, do you have that picture? Yeah. That, uh, that mark? I have something in my pocket here. I'm going to tell you. Just, it's a five-minute story and we're done. This is this. This is that there. Oh, where'd it go? <laughs> But you did see it. It was actually, it was, it was this laying on this, this heart laying on this heart. And uh, I'm going to tell you the story about this. I was working up north, and uh, it's our 25th wedding anniversary coming up. And it's not that I didn't think about it. What in the world do you buy your wife for the 25th wedding anniversary. It's like, oh my goodness. And here I am at work, and uh, I, uh, I'm coming home on the plane. I get into Edmonton, get off the plane, and I'm, I'm thinking, man, the pressure is on. I don't want to buy an airport gift <laughs> for our 25th wedding anniversary. But anyways, I, I go to this little kiosk, and it's a jewelry place. And somehow, my, you know, I just scanned through it, and something, something kind of jumped out at me, so I picked it up. And this is what I picked up. And I looked at it, and I said, wow, thank you, God. I'm going to buy an airport thing. But it was, it was a divine, in my estimation, it was a divine thing, because this was God's Heart to me at the time. This was our family. This was our family. Look at this. I got a close up of it here. Look at this. This is, this represents our family. A hundred percent. I looked at it and I thought, what? Now, you have six hearts in it. Two solid hearts, the mom, the dad. We have three boys, the hearts with the empty things in there, three boys, and we have one heart 
with jewels on it and our daughter's name, I call her for short, Jewel. All wrapped up in another heart. And I thought, whoa, that's amazing. And those are the thoughts I thought when I, when I saw that. I whipped up my wallet. I had just enough cash. I had paid for it. And Lisa's been wearing it forever. I haven't had to get her to take it off her bed, but she sleeps with it. But it was, it was God's promise to me at that time that, I am, that our family is in that heart of God. And that we will live that way because that's what the parents choose. And I know the children have, they have a choosing mechanism, but we have, they have the prayers of their parents. And it's, that is a, a promise or a covenant that our family is in God's heart. So it was very meaningful to me, and it is, I know it's to Lisa, and then it was just interesting with this heart here, that too, that I took the picture on. It says, wherever you go, go with all your heart. This comes from Kelowna General Hospital here. But you can take that and put it in scripture. And here's what it says. It's a little bit different, but in, uh, in Ecclesiastes 9.10, it says, whatever you do, do it with all of your might. And that says, wherever you go, go with all of your heart. In other words, it's saying, just give it. Go for it. You can do it. And so they could have put Ecclesiastes uh, 9, 10, but I don't think they would have done that. So anyways, that's the story about our heart. And I hope just a couple, few things might click with you with this, with this message. And yeah. Let's not be foolish people. I know it's so easy to be a foolish people, foolish in different areas of our lives, but let's not be foolish people. It mostly takes us the wrong way. It takes us towards evil. Let's be wise people that reads the word of God, that studies it, that tries to understand it, that the, illu the illumination of the spirit can come upon us, and it, it takes us towards God and eternal life. There's eternity in all of our hearts here. Anyways, and then we just have the one song, Rick, that uh, you could just maybe turn on. And uh, it's a beautiful song. It's by Delirious. And it just talks about the heart. you have my heart and I will search for yours Jesus take my life and lead me on oh, Lord you have my heart and I will search for yours let me be to you a sacrifice